Right legends and heli heads and choppers and lovers of all things, radio control, DCS world, rotors, vortex ring states and ground effect. Welcome to this video where we're going to be matching the 4080 um, against itself. Um, on the left hand side of the screen you're going to see the 4080 at the maximum frames per second that we can possibly get out of these settings that you're seeing on the screen now these settings aren't super high um, these settings a lot of people will fly with this sort of settings on a 1080 ti or a 2080 uh, or, or a 20 series or a 30 series card there's nothing special about these uh, settings or particularly demanding but what we're going to do is we're going to match the 4080 with these settings against the 4080 with um, the same settings, but uh, set up in a way in which I think is best for an immersive experience. And we'll see that when we come to the video. Quick run through. Textures high on both. Civilian traffic off. Water medium. There's no need for it to be on high. Uh, high is right the way across the entire of the DCS world map. And therefore, if you have it on high, it's a really big drain. Um, can the 4080 eat it on high? Of course. But I'm trying to use a really generic good set of um, uh, options here so we're going to set that on medium uh, visibility range uh, ultra i think is more than enough uh, you could very easily drop this to high there really is no need to go to extreme heat blur is on low i'm not sure the black shark 3 is um, showing that um, but uh, heat blur low uh, shadows high i think is important because of the immersive effect of shadows they're moving in the cockpit as you move um, in accordance with the of the light from the sun and from the surrounding uh, sky and so on. Secondary shadows is on, but only relevant to the supercarrier. You'll see here that I've got resolution at 1920 by 1080. I will be rendering in 2560 by 1440. I've got it at 1920 by 1080 right now because I'm just recording this on a 1920 by 1080 monitor. That's all. Uh, monitors 1, uh, resolution of cockpit displays at 1024, MSAA to 2, depth of field off, lens effect none. Uh, some people like lens effect for cinematic effect, but you know, do you see lens effect when you stare at the sun? No, what you see is a blinding light, so in my view, get shot. Motion blur off, that should be banned forever. Uh, and clouds are currently at high, but you know what? You could very easily drop to standard. Um, and notice very little difference. High is a good um, setting to have, um, I think, especially with volumetric clouds. SSAA I've got to times 1.5. Um, there's no need for it to go any higher, and arguably no need for times 1.5 for the higher the resolution you uh, fly at. If you were flying at 4K, there really is no benefit of having it at times 1.5. Um, but, uh, you know, for now, we're going to have it on times 1.5. MFAA um, is off in the NVIDIA control panel. Uh, reflections and ambient occlusion is both off. Clutter and gla grass is down to 750. 100% 1 and 1 and 90,000. 1 for chimney smoke. 2.2 for gamma, although I do uh, like reshade. Um, another video perhaps, but I'll keep it at 2.2. And the rest as you see. Points to note, object shadows I've kept at flat. Um, having it on default is nice to see the shadows move, etc. But are you really going to notice that? No, you're not. So uh, put it on flat. You'll notice that I've got rain droplets on and uh, full screen is on. Right, let's cut to the video now and see what we're seeing. Right, Legends, familiar territory. On the left-hand side, you can see the 4080 with V-Sync turned off in the NVIDIA control panel uh, using the settings that we've just seen. And you can see here that the GPU is working flat out uh, above 97% and it's given us the maximum frames it possibly can. On the right-hand side, on the right-hand side of the black line, you can see the 4080 and V-Sync is turned on in the NVIDIA control panel. And if you're unsure how to do that, then take a look at the top right-hand corner for part one of the three-part series we've recently done. Let's look at the left-hand side and look at just the left-hand side with both of your eyes rather than trying to look at the whole of the video. 
um, and if you look just at the left hand side you can see that the frame time is fluctuating up and down and also the frame rate is fluctuating up and down and looking at the left hand side you can see that induces micro stutters and throughout the whole of this video um, whenever uh, we're flying along like this focus on one of those sides and you'll on the left hand side you'll see the micro stutters on the right hand side you will see no stutters looking at the right hand side now you can see that well we're saving in energy you know about a hundred watts which is a good powerful light bulb and enough energy to melt the polar ice cap and of course you know save yourself some significant money as well um, and because we've got v-sync on we're at a standard 60 uh, frames per second because the monitor is 60 hertz i.e. it refreshes the screen 60 times in a second and the frame time is staying between 16.4 and 16.7 milliseconds which manifests itself as you can see with a super smooth um, flight on the right hand side of the screen throughout the whole of this mission focus on the left hand side and look at the way in which the ground moves and then focus on the right hand side um, and see um, how the ground moves under V-Sync. Now sadly V-Sync seems to be um, the misconstrued enemy of gamers in general because it induces what we call latency. Latency is essentially the frame time um, and uh, 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 therefore it, there's a slight delay in you putting inputs in before it actually translates into the sim or to the game now to be perfectly frank with you that is just piffle absolute rubbish and you'll notice no difference in any flight sim with a frame time of 16 milliseconds that is perfectly perfectly acceptable and unless you were an android and you were playing CSGO then you may well be at a slight disadvantage but certainly in any flight sim capping your frames per second by turning v-sync on and instigating a, 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 a regular and reliable frame time will ensure that your sim is very very immersive and super super smooth no micro stutters perfectly smooth now obviously this is three different videos that's been rendered here and then been captured again and rendered again in order for us to be able to watch this so although you can see that the right hand side is significantly smoother it's not really translated just how much smoother it is in this video the best way is for you to actually try it yourself one other thing I'll say is that um, obviously with G-Sync and FreeSync and V-Sync that really a very simple concept has been made very complicated in the world in general terms um, you know V-Sync will ensure that your graphics card you know will render per Hertz ie 60 times in a second if your refresh rate is 60 Hertz if your refresh rate is 120 Hertz then your screen will refresh 120 times per second and in order for you to have a smooth experience you would need to render more than 120 frames per second so all you need to do is find out the refresh rate of your monitor establish your settings in DCS world as we saw at the very beginning of this video ensure that V-Sync is off go and do a mission and um, keep your eye on your frames per second which you can do um, in um, DCS world by pressing right control and pause and just make sure that your frames per second are higher than your refresh rate and if they are then all you need to do then is go to NVIDIA control panel and turn V-Sync on for a buttery smooth experience and if they're not faster than your frames per second uh, than your refresh rate of your monitor then all you need to do is turn some settings down in your DCS um, options if that's not the sort of thing that you want to do then you will have to look at other technologies such as G-Sync, FreeSync and so on but having, uh, having got a G-Sync monitor um, and another monitor which is FreeSync compatible um, I, in my experience there is no better solution than V-Sync 
providing you are you know doing it a sim such as DCS World or MSF F, MSFS 2020 or a flight sim 16 milliseconds at 60 Hertz is perfectly perfectly good enough um, and you will have a super super smooth experience and you can see uh, for the rest of this video now um, as I shut up and leave you in peace you can see for the rest of this video just how that uh, how 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 uh, good VSync is on it is not the enemy of the world and it is not your enemy turn it on and enjoy the sim for what it is take care bye bye